वेलकम बैक दिस इज दी एन जे शो आई एम योर होस्ट मीर जोशी एंड यू नो बिफोर आई केम हेयर टू माई गेस्ट होम टूडे आई थॉट आई वॉज जस्ट थिंकिंग अबाउट ऑल द गेस्ट दैट वीव हैड इन सीजन टू ऑफ दी एन जे शो वीव हैड समबडी फ्राम अमेरिका वीव हैड समबडी फ्राम ब्रिटन वीव हैड समबडी फ्राम न्यूजीलैंड एंड टूडे वीव गॉट सम वन हुज कम टू इंडिया ऑल द वे फ्राम कैनेडा शी इज एन एब्सोल्यूटली इनक्रेडिबल सिंगर द फर्स्ट टाइम आई एक्चुअली हर्ड अबाउट हर वॉज अ कपल ऑफ प्रॉब्ली अ फ्यू ईयर्स अगो टू थ्री ईयर्स अगो and i heard about this canadian singer who's singing in hindi and i was like wow man that sounds really interesting i remember seeing a couple of her videos back then i know that since the first time that she put out her videos on youtube and people fell in love with her voice she's done so much more she sung a couple of songs here in bollywood she's worked with uh, ar rehman i think she's had an absolutely incredible journey and i can't wait to find out more about her so help me welcome on the show the absolutely wonderful incredibly talented very very pretty natalie de lucio <laughs> thank you that was such a sweet introduction It meant every line and you know i really thank can't you. wait to find out more about you i mean i like i said uh, i remember like not just me i think hundreds and thousands of people in india heard about this canadian singer who sings opera who's all of a sudden singing bollywood songs <laughs> on youtube and everybody was like what's happening and, and i think i mean i now you know now that i've seen some of the songs that have been released uh, that you've released you know with tamil films and with hindi films you've now got the position of doing the the italian reprise part yeah. of the songs yeah. so you know whether whether she wants to be an italian in the songs or not it happens it happens <laughs> she's like that's the position that we're going to give her uh -huh. but of course you've done a lot more than that uh, <laughs> i want to find out everything and yeah, um, i'm i'm looking forward to doing this this is i'm so happy to be here <laughs> so let's yeah. start at the beginning as yeah. i always do so how, how did you get into singing to begin with let's yeah. get into the bollywood singing and the hindi songs okay. later on how did singing happen for you so i've been singing since i was a little kid always and then when i was around 4 years old my mom put me in singing lessons okay. and then it was like from there on there was <laughs> no going back right? uh, you were in canada right yeah. where so where was, in canada yeah i was in toronto in toronto okay and um you know just from a child i always had a little voice okay so my mom knew that she should put me in singing lessons and then okay. from there it just it was this burning passion from when i was little and it was the only thing i wanted to do it okay. wasn't just a hobby it was uh, like and what was what was the kind of singing lessons that you were taking at that age so when i was 4 or 5 years old initially it was like you'd learn like disney songs and like you know the very beginning very basics yeah and then um as i grew older i um changed teachers as well like as i progressed and i went on to um a western classical coach so right. more like in terms of opera training right because that's like the basics when you learn to sing it's like ballet when you learn to dance ballet okay. is like the basics and same with um with western classical music a lot of times the western classical training operatic training really helps you that you can sing anything else no, absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. and now you great actually, technique i had i always had this operatic voice okay so when i was around 12 years old i had like this huge voice that it used to scare people also because it was like i was like a 30 year old voice in a 12 year old body like very oh, wow. big opera voice wow so um it kind of matured very quickly okay um and and yeah so from from then onwards i used to enter like every singing competition anywhere i could perform so do you remember one of the first songs opera songs that you performed on stage do you remember what you did okay, back then i think for oh man um okay there's been a lot I guess a lot when I was young I used to sing at a lot of church weddings and all of that. So your classic operatic church songs like um Ave Maria. Ah. That was probably my first real kind of classical. Oh wow, nice. Classical song. Nice. Um, and 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 you sang that also in a lot of competitions and stuff? No. No, no. In, so what was, that was the, more what, of a religious song, but right. in competitions I would sing um and See when you would do singing competitions in Canada, um there'd be categories. Uh so there is this beautiful beautiful classic aria it's mm -hmm. called O mio babino caro okay. composed by Puccini okay. so this was a song that I grew up uh, singing at for a lot of competitions and just you know anywhere when I would perform so um, let's hear a bit of it yeah okay O mio babino caro mi piace Oh wow, you. that was really cool. <laughs> I see you. what you mean. You know, your voice really. I I love how you can just sort of make it resonate and really make it big. And when you Thank talk, you. it's it's like a normal volume, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, so much so much sound coming out of 
one person I, like i said you know i think uh, we actually you know what we are cheating here we actually did this once and i said this to her you know a little while ago that it must have been amazing you know as a kid for you to do something uh. like this and then for people to hear it and be like wow that was that was huge right so i mean yeah as you so these these, these this was one of the songs that you were doing yeah back this when and you were a 12. lot of musical theater songs also like from little mermaid and there was all these classic oh, yeah? all old, of that. old you know when you're little you learn all these these cute songs yeah so a lot of fun memories growing up and Um, All right. So so this was your the early education in music. Yes, yes. What happened after that? So then after that I I mean as I grew older I even took it more and more seriously. I I was also doing a lot of musicals in Canada. So oh, I do okay. a lot of a lot of um musical theater productions. Oh, nice. And um as well training in opera and then I went to an arts high school as well. Okay. So my my school this is have you've seen the show Glee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very much like that. Oh, yeah. Be- like exactly. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so it was a, it was a a school that you had to audition to get in so everybody who was in the school was what was the school called cardinal carter for the arts oh nice very and actually cool. i did a video with them as well last year i went there and i shot okay. a christmas song there with so, the choir there oh yeah which was it which oh, was oh holy night oh holy night yeah. yes yes by the way uh, we'll get to it in a in a little while in any case but you have to check out her videos on her youtube channel her youtube <laughs> channel is uh, youtube.com/natalie delucio natalie delucio check it out amazing amazing songs on that I mean, some of my favorite songs done her way which is what i really loved because it's it's a it's a very unique way that she's done some of the songs and her latest cover we'll talk about that but <laughs> we we're, we're going to get to it as her story progresses so okay yeah. so you went back you did the song with them but uh, tell yeah. me about your school so, so you so you had to audition to get in yeah so i was in the music program i was in the vocal program okay. so there was different programs dance acting um orchestra hmm. and visual arts and right. and big band and so all of that was there so everybody that i was surrounded around was was very passionate nice. and they were very focused on their whatever you know their art area was okay. and everybody was extremely talented i mean you walk in the hallways everybody was singing and it was just like it was I was very very lucky to you know go to such a school. Wow. Um so it was like this so was something So it's more like the Niada part of Glee rather than the actual yeah. high school. You know that's when <laughs> yeah, yeah, they yeah. finally got to this uh, sorry I'm being all uh, I'm being a glee right now <laughs> but I I used to love that show because I thought they did some of the most incredible covers yeah, on that show as well. Yeah, but yeah. yeah I know what you mean. Sorry. So you, you were so saying So it was just like a very like so I grew up in this kind of environment where you'd walk in the hallways and people are dancing practicing and you know it was an amazing thing. Yeah. So basically from then onwards even when i was you know 15 16 i used to go out and find anywhere i could p- perform or audition or i used to be like the professional national anthem singer in toronto i was uh-huh. singing at all the um baseball games hockey, hockey games. football everything i was just like i just it was like my my part time job <laughs> <laughs> i'd sing for pizza that was <laughs> 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 so yeah so this was like there was never um a backup plan it was just like i even in school it was like it was always just music during yeah. my lunch break we had practice rooms with piano so i just go in there and write songs and um, so do you play yeah not like amazing but decent i've trained in piano for about 10 years oh wow um in when with western classical music it's pretty like mandatory you have that to you have be to able play. to Correct. study as well so then after that i went on to um, mcgill university i was doing a degree in opera oh wow okay so that was like it was this crazy journey i had because like very honestly it was i since i was little i always had this operatic voice right but my passion was always more towards mainstream right. mainstream classical correct so what would sometimes happen is in in mcgill the thing i struggled with it's the most incredible program and for any opera singer it's like a dream to go there okay but i struggle with the fact that because i also like pop music hmm. as a as a opera singer you can't sing pop because okay. it 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 ruined it not it your technique that yeah. you sing in classical once you sing pop it kind of it ruins your operatic technique okay. you want to in pop you want to slur you want to go hi you can you can do that when you're singing classical music so okay. all these little things my teacher said you can't sing pop if you're training here and all this oh, wow. so i kind of was like struggling because i was getting a lot of singing opportunities outside of school right and um my gut told me that this is a time right now where i have to take these opportunities because at the end of the day a degree in music is it's always going to be there correct and it's but if you're getting a good op you know yeah, this is, you got this is you what can't you let it go doing, yeah right? like so um yeah i went through like this it was a difficult phase because i had to decide whether i was going to leave school or anything like that but i knew in my gut it was the right thing it was just hard you nice, know nice nice and then within a week something happened that i got a message over my space okay from a um a guitarist okay. here in mumbai oh wow okay and his name is too sharp right this is back in 2008 okay so okay. i was i was 
18, 17, 18. And um, he messaged me and he had uh, said that he wanted me to record some chants from Canada for an album. But he didn't tell me what it was or anything. But right. I had all my music up on MySpace. I right. had a lot of my original music. Right, right. So then I did these vocals and then I remember it was like snowing in, in Montreal. I was in Quebec huh. studying and the snow was up to here at the door and I opened it and I get this, this CD in the mail. Okay. It was called Maha Ganesha. Okay. And it was an album by Sonu Nigam. Oh wow. So and this was this was him mailing me the CD of what I had sung on. <laughs> Oh man, okay. And imagine like I was like very naive. I, I wasn't really like at all um, uh, introduced to this world yet of right, music. Right, right. And so just by coincidence, Medi Chachi Ji is, is Indian. Okay. Okay. So her name's Deepika Diluccio. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, I called Deepika and said, Deepika, do you know who the singer is, right? And then she was like, Oh my God, so do they come home. How? <laughs> what? Like, how did that happen, you know? So I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. So I remember sitting in like my dorm on YouTube and like watching Sonu Nigam's videos and I was like yeah. in awe. You know yeah. what I mean? He was so talented and was and just being introduced to this whole yeah. other world of music. Yeah. And then the same composer um, who had messaged me had said that he would like me to come to India and work on a fusion album with his wife. Nice. His wife was an Indian classical singer okay. and they were working on a chakra album. So okay. they wanted me to like this fusion of Western classical and Indian classical. And I was 19 at the time. And, but my gut, something was telling me, I need to go, I need to go. Mm. But obviously it was, it was scary also because I was very young and I never really traveled much like on my own especially. So, yeah. and my parents weren't gonna just like, you know, just go and, but somehow they, they supported it and my brother came with me the first time. Yeah. And then I, I remember like first, you know, your first time landing in Mumbai, it was just like very overwhelming and, and Slumdog Millionaire had just come out. Oh, a week okay. Before. So a week before boarding the plane, I had watched that movie. And you know okay. that movie really predicts People a different way. By the way, he was in Some Dog Millionaire. Oh, he was. Yeah. Sadly. Oh, okay. So, so we got a little guest who's he sitting was over here. In, in Some Dog Millionaire. Oh, huh? brilliant. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so I saw this movie, and the movie obviously picturizes a very different uh, India. Also, you know, I mean, uh, uh, partially realistic, but not. That's not everything. That's right? not like, how. You know what I mean? Everything is. So yeah. obviously, when I saw that, I kind of panicked. I said, "Oh my God, where am I going?" You know. Huh. And then, and then I landed and I remember so many people at the airport and all and I was kind of like, my brother and I were like, you know, we came from like a very like sub suburb bubble. So we were also very excited because it was like completely new. Yeah. And then... Um, so like, where are all the snakes gone? Where yeah. are all those... Yeah. yeah. Where are all the snake charmers and, yeah. the, and, the, and, the, and, and the, the elephants? And the and elephants. And <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And the monkeys and yeah, all of that. So, um, yeah, so then, I mean... Yeah, as soon as we got here, it was like obviously a completely different thing than I pictured. And I was like, I fell in love with India within five seconds. Right. Five seconds means after I went back, my only thing I was thinking about all the time is how much I wanted to come back. Wow. I had first come here for two weeks to okay. do this recording. And then I kept extending my ticket. Yes. I was introduced to Amr Mohile. Yeah. Who's an incredible background score composer. That, I mean, that's mainly what he does. Correct. He composes a lot as well. And so I had, he was the first person who kind of um, made me sing. And you could say it was my first time singing in a background score and all of that. And a lot of background scores use operatic vocals. Correct. So I was like so excited. I was this young girl. I just got out of school and, and then, you know, going and doing this and seeing these film, these movies. He was giving me, he gave me a Sarkar. Oh, wow. That was one of the first films I watched. Okay. And it was like. And what was the part that you did in, in, in the background? No, I didn't sing in that one. You he didn't had sing first that. given me this DVD to watch that he I had done the music it. for. Okay. And I really, really, really loved the movie. Okay. And then for him. In the background score I had done at that time, it was a, a jail, which okay. was Neil Nathan Mukesh. Right. And there was a few, one of them didn't release, it was called Nam. Okay. I don't know, it hasn't released. And um, a few others have also. So, so Anyways, what, long story when, short. Yeah, you know, so, so what I'm saying uh, is, if you say that, okay, it, it background scores of Bollywood films use operatic vocals, how exactly is your voice used? I just want to hear what you would do. Like, what would you be told to do? This is the situation and this is where uh, I need your vocal to be in the background. See, it obviously depends on the scene. It depends on the score. It depends on what's happening. If something scary is happening, then you might want like very intense, like, <laughs> like that kind of oh, stuff. Ju so stuff like that. But it's brought down, obviously, but of it gives course. that effect. Correct. Or sometimes when someone's crying, you're not necessarily doing opera. I'm doing like more pop soothing, like, like just like those kind of little so if you were wondering who makes all those sounds in <laughs> in in the background of all of your favorite movies it's very <laughs> likely her <laughs> or or you know other people who are called basically to, to tell them that they have those kind of tones exactly those say. tones and you know but it's such an interesting thing because most of us you know when we watch a film yeah. it's so mechanical that you go there you see the actor actress you see what happens on screen yeah. which is just the sort of the the 
uppermost layer of a film i mean there's just so much that goes into the sound design as well i mean yeah, it's so yeah, fascinating uh, how there are layers and layers and, and you know you, you were saying that you know i mean even when you probably watched amar uh, composed the background yeah. score i mean it must have been an interesting experience yeah yeah i was i was completely fascinated i mean seeing his whole studio and the way everything is arranged and his his orchestral arrangements as well yeah. and when i would watch him watch the film and see what he was scoring at certain moments yeah. see a lot of times when you watch a movie you don't actually think you know you don't necessarily the, the background score is supposed to be in the background right Correct. it's just supposed to add it's just a layer in the back somewhere yeah, yeah but then you know you when you you see what it actually does yeah. how it completely changes an entire scene exactly. what the music does exactly. it touches people if there's a crying moment yeah. and there's some sad little you know whispery vocals coming in all these Correct. little things really yeah and they so make that a was a massive difference yeah yeah Correct. so that was kind of like my first little experience okay and um i i mean i loved it Brilliant. and then um so that was my first trip yeah. and then i went back to canada and i was like missing india to to the point that like in toronto there was a movie theater uh. it's called albion albion cinemas okay. and that's where you get you can watch all the bollywood films right so i had one of my best girlfriends she was also bollywood obsessed so okay. we would go every week i swear to god <laughs> and and watch every bollywood film we could and just get our fix i remember we were watching love ajkal and all these films nice and um and that was also they had english subtitles cuz i'm um, so that also helped so obviously that, at the yeah, time to understand the movie yeah, yeah. and um But then what what would happen is every time I would exercise or whatever I'd put on a Bollywood film at home. Okay. So this is how I would learn Hindi. This ah. really helped me. I I can't even tell you how much it helped me. Yeah. So I would watch all these films every day. For an hour I'd be on my treadmill and I'd watch um a Bollywood film and I was just like dying to go back. Nice. And then at this time um Sonu Nigam had just got on Facebook, hmm. okay? And this is on Facebook was still still Relatively just starting, new. right? Correct. Yeah. and i messaged him i said hey i'm the girl that sung on your mahogany album and he was like oh and then he was um uh okay then un- unfortunately michael jackson had oh, passed, passed away this is yeah. around that time yeah yeah and um i was obviously a huge fan like everybody yeah and um uh sonu nigam had he had posted on uh his facebook asking people to uh, give their voc- like to share their vocals for a tribute song and of course that was something i was really wanting to do and yeah. you know like everyone we all grew up listening to him. Yeah. So I um sent a little demo you can say and then there was a few of us that got chosen. Hmm. And um so this this video came out and and Sonu was Sonu ji was very impressed and uh so then he was coming to Toronto for a concert. Okay. So then I met him in Toronto and then he said you know you should really come to India and um um uh, meet these different music directors and mm. saying and of course that was something that I was becoming like I w- like I said I was watching all these films and I was like dying to come back. Okay. So of course I was just like scared to just you know I I didn't really know again that many people and but then somehow like I just bought I I booked that ticket. I came. I didn't even know who I was going to stay with yeah. and like what was going to happen. That was like a very scary thing. And but somehow I've had like so many guardian angels in my <laughs> life. I can't even tell you. So when I first came a friend um a friend's friend let me stay with them i didn't even know who they were and because i like i didn't know where to look also you know all this so i've been extremely lucky so then i ca- so anyways i came mm-hmm. i was just going to stay for one month one month turned into two months three months four months five months and then my poor mom was just like dying at home so worried about me when is <laughs> yeah. when is natalie coming back when is my daughter back, coming yeah. back right and so she lost me after that i mean i was like i just I yeah I I just got introduced to this whole other world right yeah. so suddenly from being here people would call me for acting auditions and commercials and voiceovers and shit dazzle so it was just like this like other another world that like I had never <laughs> seen before I came from yeah. like a suburb you know yeah so um I fell in love with India and then I had heard the song Tu Jaane Na okay which I loved when I was here and I went back to Canada and um after those five months and again I was really missing India and I was kind of like depressed because I really wanted to come back. Yeah. So I heard um this beautiful beautiful piano arrangement when I was in Canada on YouTube from this boy named Sanjay Das. He's okay. he lives in Calcutta. Okay. Very young boy, 13 years old at the time. Mm-hmm. So he was doing this really beautiful piano arrangements of Hindi songs. Okay. So when I heard his version of Tu Jaane Na, I was like, "Oh my god, I can sing on this." Like it yeah. was just really nice. So then I decided I hesitated a lot and I decided Okay, let me just put this up for my friends I met in India. Like I didn't have any expect At that time YouTube also covers nothing like that even existed. Correct. There was no Hindi covers. Correct. In any song, you there just didn't exist yet. The culture wasn't there. Correct. So, um I put the song out and honestly at this time I was a waitress, okay? Okay. So, I remember I was like serving people and and then suddenly my phone 
is just like going ballistic, okay? Like millions of beeps and emails and, and Facebook and, and I'm like, I didn't expect this. So also like my internet stuff was all over the place. Huh. Like my bio, everything was like scattered, right? Huh. So people are all wondering, who is this girl? What, you know? And so I remember with, with the other girls were like, oh my God, look at this, what is happening? And like, <laughs> I didn't plan any of this, you know? Hmm. And um, I, I obviously like, I really wanted to go back and I was so excited that whatever had happened and yeah. I had just had so many people that were just so kind and supportive towards this video and I, I swear to you I almost deleted it within five minutes of uploading it because I was scared that people were going to make fun of me because <laughs> I really obviously like I couldn't hear it like you would hear it right yeah. so I didn't know if it was going to be like something that people were like <gasps> or if they're going to be like okay it's nice like I didn't know uh -huh. so I was like obviously in awe and like extremely happy and um yeah, so then... So the response for the video was pretty instantaneous. Like yeah, within, within like the next one day, two days. Oh, the wow. first day, it had 600,000 views. Within one day. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's that was massive. Like, like yeah, even yeah. today, that's massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so insane. that was... And like, I guess at that time also, the idea of doing a cover also was very new. Yeah. Um, in, so terms every, of, in, in terms of Bollywood anyways. Correct. It was, it was so ev everybody was passing it around, listening, say, oh, it's a, you got to check this out. This yeah, is really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember I was at work and I was like... I, I wanted to go to India right away and yeah. like I had to like quit and <laughs> I was scared and then um, I decided to do a second Hindi cover. Okay. Wait, 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 before we go into the second huh. Hindi cover, I got to hear you sing that because everybody's seen the video on YouTube <laughs> and that was a long, long time ago and I was just telling her that her Hindi, her spoken Hindi also right now, I heard her talk to a few people right now since I've come to her home and it's really, really improved. Thank so you. I got to hear you sing that song again and see the difference the between... The improvement? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But I'll, I'll tell you something though. Yeah. Even though people improve, when you learn a song first, the that way, way you it remember stays it. that way. Yeah. So everyone always... I was always told when I was little, whenever I would learn a song, to learn it properly from the beginning because those are habits after, it's like muscle okay. memory. Muscle memory. So I don't know how much is going to change. That's cool. Let, well, irrespective of the, whether yeah, yeah, there yeah, is a change see. or okay, not, let's see. Let's see. I'm curious. Let's hear it. So, tu jane na, right? Yeah, tu jane na. Kaise batai ki tu jo ko cha hai yara pata na bhai very cool all right so you decided to record another cover after that which was that yeah so the second one i did was um a a, a rm answer song yeah. which was a song that I, when I heard it, I really connected with it and I, I liked the pop influence as well, which was something that vocally connected with me. Yeah. And of course, the words, the emotion. I was going through major heartbreaks, so the songs were <laughs> really Perfect helping fit. me at the time. <laughs> so that was also what was happening. So I, so everyone used to say in the comments, you know, they can really feel it because I was feeling it. Right. I was like a disaster. So I put out the second song, Kahito, and... Um, from that, uh, Ray Munster's team had seen it wow. and they had forwarded it to him and everything. So that kind of introduced me to him, wow. which was an amazing thing. And then his team invited me um, to perform in his concert. So anyways, everyone was really wonderful. And I remember the very first show actually what happened was um, in Nagpur, it started late. Okay. So I was my first time singing. It was Kanhito I was singing in the show. So I was just yeah. waiting on stage ready to sing. And then suddenly Ray Munster comes on stage and he goes, Okay guys, really sorry, but we have to end the show. Bye. And I'm standing there, okay? I'm like just waiting and I said, wait, I think what? he's joking. Because he always kind of giggles. Like, yeah. you never know if he's like joking or serious. So yeah. I was waiting there and I was kind of laughing because I thought he was just joking to get the audience to be like, no, no, no. Like You're again, again. But no, what happened was the cops came oh. because it got late. So that was like the first time. So <laughs> I, I remember he said, I'm sorry, like you didn't get to sing. That was the first show. Oh man. And then obviously after that, then we did other ones and there was no issues like that. <laughs> but um, So the yeah. first time that you were actually the supposed to The first time I was actually going to I was so nervous. And oh, then I man. remember, yeah. But then, um, you know, once you actually get on the stage, when you see his fans, yeah, with the support, they are just constantly cheering you just feel so great you know yeah. and, and that whatever nerves you have it just goes because there's just so many amazing people just cheering you on regardless and um, when we had sung Vande Mataram at the end that's always something that I always it always stays with me oh wow because that was a really magical experience uh, that must have been yeah. okay so I, I'm gonna get you to sing yeah. one of the songs that you did with uh, Rehman sir anything that you want either one of the songs that you did later on or maybe 
this one itself. Okay, okay. So, so I mean, in terms, okay, there's Kahi To or, or Kahi To. Or, uh, um, let's let's hear you do Kahi To first. Okay, okay. So, we'll we'll get, so Chandra Lekha that she just mentioned right now is her latest cover on her YouTube channel. You got to go and check that out. It's <laughs> absolutely brilliant. And it's one of, you know what, for me, growing up uh, in my teenage years, Eha Rehman's music was the absolute bomb it was like yeah. every song and you know even if you didn't understand some of the songs that he was doing because there were a lot of tamil songs yeah, coming yeah, in yeah. and I, I don't speak tamil They're you just knew though. those songs and uh. you wanted to you wanted to you know dance to those songs and you you'd be humming the tunes irrespective of whether you knew one single yeah. word you seem to have really mastered the yeah. words when, when you <laughs> did the cover which is really really cool but i want to hear a bit of kahito first okay 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 yeah okay and it's a it's a really beautiful song kahito kahi to hogi wo duniya chaha tu mere saath hai chaha main chaha tu aur jaha bas tere mere jasbat hai होगी जहा सुबह तेरी पालकों की किरणों में लोरी जहा चांद की सुने तेरी पाह That was so cool. That was very, very cool. And you know, Thank since you. we did speak about it, how about a little bit of Chandra Lekha as well? Just a little okay, bit. Okay, this okay. is for all the Tamil-speaking people out there. Special uh, dedication for all of you from from both of us here. So this is a song that I I would hear in Ramanzar's concerts. Okay. And I always, always, always loved it. And I loved even in the beginning. And actually, had a very had an operatic element. Yeah. So I would sing sometimes in the shows. The um. The first the very part. Very intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Da, da, da. A little thing. Yeah. So I always loved it. I found it very edgy and rockish, yeah. and a little bit actually that evanescence. I don't know if you know evanescence. Yeah, that, I know. That a little bit of that, that dark yeah. style. So I really liked it, and I I'd been wanting to do it for a while. Okay. But I was always a little hesitant because it was Tamil. Yeah. Um, but after spending more time in Chennai, I felt a little braver to attempt at it because I really love the song. Very cool. Anyways, okay, I'll sing a little bit for Go you. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. Kaun jam ni lava, on chasir tal in den te hum kon jam namja kon jam amadam on chasir tal in den kangal kon jam mir kam kon jam karavul on chasir tal in den ninjam chandra le ka Wow, that was cool. That was really cool. <laughs> and, and you know what? We just discovered one small common sort of element between her music and mine. Very, very distant common element. But my guitar player Sanju, who plays in my band, yeah, played, he was in the video. Yeah, played in played uh, yeah, guitar on your, on your video, yeah. which is. He's really, amazing. really cool. He's, He's a really amazing. cool guitar player. Very cool. But very nice. So okay. So we kind of. Jump from your first video yeah. to what is your most recent video. Yeah. But so in this entire process of making yeah. videos for YouTube, yeah. uh, I guess you also found work happening in the in the actual industry as well. Yeah. Right? Apart so what happened is covers. after that, I I moved, I came to India, and I was here. At first, it wasn't like I was here for six months, and then I would, ah, but then I just loved it. So like this is home for me. Yeah. This is home. Yeah. And um, I love what I get to do here and this industry everyone has been so welcoming to me yeah. um, the great thing is so in terms of the kind of singing that I do here I do a lot of actually a lot of ads a lot of jingles hmm. which hmm. is always something that I really enjoy because with every ad you get to sing a different style sometimes Correct. they want jazz or opera or rock so yeah. I really enjoy that and um, as well when it comes to films yeah. obviously like it's very particular like films where my voice will suit it obviously yeah. if it's like an NRI um, you know that I'll be singing for or Correct. in the score or if it's like abroad. you did that uh, you did the marathi bit in in yeah, in the yeah. amitravedi uh, huh. in english no, english yeah english english navrai ma ji so she the girl that part that i sang she was 
mm. born in America. Born so in America, so she sounds accent, a little different. Right? Okay, you know what? I got to get you to sing a little bit of that as well. Okay. So you, you've just heard a Tamil song. You heard her sing in English, obviously, a little while ago. You heard uh, heard a Hindi song, and here's a Marathi song now. Okay, let's, okay. Let's, let's do this. This is, this is I, I love this song. This I, is, I think it's beautiful. Okay. I've seen your video on YouTube where you've been singing it live, huh. and people seem to love it as well when you're performing it's it happy, live. It's a happy, happy song. It's Actually, happy the song. joke is, though, in the actual recording, so what happened is, Swanin Kirkire, he had called me, and he said, Natalie, we, we want this to be like, you're not supposed to sing it properly and everything, but I'm kind of a perfectionist, so I want to make sure my words at least are correct. Yeah. Obviously, my accent is going to be there and everything, but yeah. so I, I swear the first take I did, huh. they kept, because <laughs> I was like, no, Swan, and I want to do it better. He's like, no, 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 you have this to, you is have what to keep, it. keep And I laughed. I know, the, end, the laugh at the end is also there. I was laughing because I was like, it was my first <laughs> try, so I was laughing because I said, I hope I said this right, and then they kept it. <laughs> so, so that was the story with that song. All but, right, um, so let's hear okay, it. Let's hear a bit of it. Navrai ma chilara chilara chiga Awara hila chandra chi chandra chiga Navrai ma chi navasa chi navasa chiga Absara zashi indra chi indra chiga Ga 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 Alright, very cool, very cool. So yeah, okay, so, so this happened, you know, I mean yeah. And so songs started coming. You yeah, know, like the, whenever the, the kind of scenarios happen where it fit. Where it I fit. mean, most recently um, there was this Tamil film I. Mm. Tamil meaning it released also in Hindi and Telugu yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what happened is with I. Um, so yeah, Amy Jackson is Amy the heroine. Jackson so it hero. kind of like the, in these scenarios it works where I could I could sing. Right. And I think Ramanser also really wanted to experiment with adding a bit of an operatic element in right. Tamil music, which although he had done those little like intros and stuff he Bits. never really fully out went and did that yeah um so what happened was it was kind of just like by accident he we were just kind of i was just kind of oh and he's like do that do that so um it was it was a challenge though because singing in tamil huh. and trying to make it clear while singing operatically as it is operatic music a lot of times even if you understand language you don't really understand what, what they're, singing they're singing because yeah. the words are getting stretched and so it was a bit of a challenge yeah to keep those long notes in and still kind of can't, like, try to get the pronunciation as, yeah. as close as possible. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, but it was a really cool thing. I mean, the scene in the film, see when the song first came out, I think people were confused because mm. it's kind of like, it's a, it's a kind of a, it's a wacky song. It goes all over the place. Yeah. But when you see the visuals, it makes sense okay. because in the visuals, every second, like there's some, they're changing from someone's head's getting chopped off. So obviously it's a joke. Okay. He's, it's like his beard, actually it's not his head, it's a beard is getting chopped off for okay. a Gillette ad. So okay. this actually, <laughs> this song is a bunch of advertisements Okay. in the film. It's like, because ah. she's a model, Okay. so it's her okay. as a model doing all kinds of advertisements. Okay. So at that point it made sense to have like a crazy operatic, you know, drama, uh, dramatic Can tone. I hear a bit of it? <laughs> Tell <laughs> me how it goes. Tone. Yeah, that's fine. So, no, no, I mean, okay, I'll just sing a little bit of the song. Yeah, yeah. So it changes, the thing is actually what was, what was different for me is in the song my vocal, um, um, it was the style of singing was changing always. Okay, okay. First, I started pop, then a little bit of, uh, uh, then this opera would come back and forth, back and forth. But okay, I'll just sing a little clip yeah, of little the song. Yeah, a little bit, little bit, yeah. So it's. I la I la I I la I la I I la I la I made in vanilla. I la I la I I la I la I I la I la I made in vanilla. In the Roman city, the Kirova, the Rin Kurile, Mana de Kurova, Mohat and Muri, Tedo de Pogova, Ninga de Yen Romane. Cut head. <laughs> so that was like that. That was just like a little. So it was like a wacky, dreamy song. Oh, that was crazy. So it wasn't supposed to be like a. Yeah, so that was also really kind of a uh, kind of fun experiment that you don't really get to do these kind of things, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's kind of how like I've been. It's been really interesting because I get to do very different kind of yeah. things that I never really know where my path is gonna go. Very cool. Which I I love. I love the spontaneousness. Very cool. Um, of this of this industry and what I get to do as a singer. So it's time now for our rapid fire round before okay. we wrap up for the day. Um, so. Some simple questions that I have lined up for you. And before we actually get into the rapid fire round, I want to tell you that we always record the show a few days before you guys get to see it. And on the day that I've come to record with her, 
uh, it is the 4th of May which is the only reason why there's a Darth Vader statue over there and we just thought it would be really cool to wish <laughs> all of you because I'm a big Star Wars fan, I'm a, a geek that way and I just thought it would be fun for me to bring Darth Vader and get him to join Natalie and me on the show and wish you guys all uh, may, may the 4th be, be with, with you. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're looking forward to the 7th part which we'll be releasing later on this year but we'll talk about that later. Alright, rapid fire uh, question round okay. time now. You saw some people had, had I think posted some questions online. There were a few questions, okay. that, you know, we put it up on Twitter. Speaking of which, yeah. both of us are on Twitter. Uh, her Twitter handle is Natalie Di Lucio. Natalie Di Lucio. That is, uh, well, you'll see the spelling on huh, screen. On screen on and that. my uh, mine is at Mihir Joshi Music. Make sure you write to us and uh, yeah. tell us what you feel about the episode today. Tell us please, what you feel please, about please. her songs. Make mm -hmm. sure you check out her YouTube channel and give her all the feedback that you can because she's got some great, great songs. And make sure you go on and check out Chandra Lekha, which is her latest cover. <laughs> all right. Now, first question. Uh, what is the one venue in the world that you would love to go and perform in? That you've not performed in yet? Huh, in Tuscany. Oh yeah? By the water. Oh wow. Uh, there's an amazing venue there where David Foster goes every year. Not every year, he goes, it's been happening a few times. Yeah. Where he puts on this amazing concert with Andrea Bocelli. Oh wow. <laughs> so since I was little, I, I used to like watch these concerts online and yeah. it's been a dream to kind of share that stage. And David Foster as well has been a big inspiration for me. Wow. The music that he composes is some it's of our favorite incredible. music. Incredible, yes. So, um, that he produces and composes. So, yeah. yeah, by the water, I mean in Italy, it's it's something is very magical about that. And if I had to ask you, a, a singer that you'd love to collaborate with, is the answer almost given in this question? Yeah, it's very <laughs> much given. So since I was little, I've grown up listening to Andrea Bocelli, yeah. who was kind of my, I was, he was my big inspiration because he was a, he was a classically trained singer, yeah. but he he managed to do it in a very commercial, like pop way. Yeah. So he connected with more people because it Kidding. was like it connected to everyone. When he yeah. sang, yeah. didn't matter if you understood it or not. He just he just touched you so much, and his yeah. emotions, yeah. which is where I think I I've taken that. Um, where I naturally like when I sing, I I sing from like I sing from the heart. Yeah. I, that emotion comes out when I sing, and I think that comes from growing up listening to him and that really connected with me that he like literally pours his soul when he's oh he does he does and, and and you won't believe it but honestly and i'm not just saying it because i'm sitting here with her i've been a huge andrea bocelli fan yes i sing rock and i sing blues and <laughs> uh, and you know it's, it's it's a lot more mainstream but uh, i think it was because of an album called Amore which he Amore. released and there was a live concert and I think in India they'd shown uh, the concert on television and I fell in love with his voice yeah. and it was just so beautiful and irrespective of whether you understand a word or not and which I don't either because it's in Italian I think his voice like you said it just hits you right here yeah. It just connects so beautifully with uh, with anybody who's listening to it, and uh, and you know uh, I know you're a you're you're a big Celine Dion fan. We were just talking yes, about that. Yes. Yes. And there was a song that Celine Dion had done with Andrea Bocelli. It's called yes. the Prayer. Yes. And this is the same song that I've dreamed since I was little to sing with Andrea Bocelli. It's oh been wow. Like my since like I could die once that happens. Basically, <laughs> I'm just like dreaming of that moment. Um, and the prayer. And so the you pr know the song. I, I kind of do. I mean a little bit. But I'd love to hear you sing it. Can you sing it with me? Uh, okay, I'm gonna try. Let me see if I can. Okay, let's hey, let's I give it a shot. Italian, okay, so I'll okay. I'll sing the English parts. I'll sing the English parts. Let's let's try it I'm out. I'm so happy you know this. Okay, okay, let's do this. Let's okay. do this. Yeah. This is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous song. All right, we're gonna try this out. I have never sung this song before. <laughs> I never thought I'd find anybody to sing the song with. I mean, I've grown. I have loved this song for so many years, and Andrea Bocelli does it like. Oh my god, it's such a dream. Just listening. Every time I hear it, I get goosebumps. And I never thought I'd get to actually sing this song. So I'm gonna try it out and I hope I don't mess it up because I know she nails it every time. You know, so <laughs> let's let's hear it. Let's hear it. Okay, okay. So I'll so start you, you from start, the beginning? Yeah, from the beginning okay. and I'll just join you on the few English parts. Okay, okay. Okay. I pray you'll be alright. And watch us where we go and help us to be wise in times when we don't know let this be our prayer when we lose our way to a place guide us with your grace to a place where we'll be safe 
la luce che tu dai. I pray we'll find your life. Nel cuore resterà. And hold it in our heart. A ricordarci che. When stars go out each night. L'eterna stella se. Let this be our prayer When shadows fill our day Lead us to a place Guide us with your grace To a place where we'll be safe Need to find a place Guide us with your grace. Give us faith so we'll be saved. Yay, high five! Very that cool. was pretty great for your first time. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> and. Uh, Wow, I, I'm actually not completely embarrassed by that effort, which is not not <laughs> bad considering she absolutely nailed it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna let you in on a secret. I had actually seen her do this song a long, long time ago. I think it's one of your first few videos. Yeah, first right? videos on YouTube. Yeah. On YouTube. Yeah. And she's done this with a with a girl in Canada. My friend Alessandra, beautiful singer. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful song. So <laughs> go check it out. Check out all the songs on her YouTube channel. They're absolutely brilliant. All right, Thank one last you. question, and okay. we'll wrap up for the okay. day. Uh, now you have already worked with uh, A R Rahman, uh -huh. and you worked with a few other music uh -huh. directors. Who else is there in India um, as a music director whom yeah. you would love to work with? I would love to work with Preetam. Work I with Preetam. love a lot of his ballads. I'm a ballad girl, yeah. like major ballad girl. Yeah. So I love a lot of his ballads, nice. and um, so I'm hoping I'm gonna just bug him a bit. <laughs> There you go, Pritam. Pritam, da, apne sunli hai. You heard her say that she'd love to work with you. Let's make it happen. Yes. All of you watching us right now, wish for uh, her uh, to get a song with Pritam. You know, the few da times he called soon. me, I was in Canada. So, and of course, you have to be there when it happens when yeah. the call comes. But yeah, you got to be there. Of course, I. Yeah, he's he's. I I love it. I'm sure it's going to happen very soon and there's no doubt about the fact that you've got an absolutely incredible voice and I'm sure music directors are probably just figuring out, okay, where do we find a song where we can fit It could Natalie fit, in? exactly. Exactly. Right. So <laughs> thank, thank you, you very, very much for Listen, being on the show. it was so nice talking with you. I really enjoyed this and I rarely get the opportunity to really just tell my story. A lot of people really don't know yeah. and so I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful that we can do this today. And I'm really glad. I'm really glad we could do this. I hope you guys have had fun. I had a great time sitting here listening to her talk. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hopefully get back with her sometime later and jam on a song properly. Yeah. And, and we should do that. We Paka. should. We should. Paka. We should Chalo. do a song Kabhi? properly. We'll plan it out. <laughs> Show होने के बाद हम plan करेंगे. Show होने के बाद हम plan कर सकते हैं. She's she's brilliant by the way. She speaks <laughs> Hindi perfectly. She she sings English. She sings like in ten different languages. What I've read somewhere online. <laughs> uh, probably more than that. But uh, once again, thank, thank you very you. very much thank for being on the show. It's been so much fun. Uh, we are on Twitter at Natalie DiLucio. Yes. I'm at Mihir Joshi Music. Get in touch with us. Please. This is pretty much all the time that we have for now. Natalie and Mihir saying bye bye. Bye. See you soon.